240-240. When the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. Amen. Baptist Church. Good to see everyone this evening. I'd like to welcome our visitors and returning guests. Church-wide visitation will be Tuesday on May 3rd. Well, that's already happened. So winning is May 7th. Don't forget at 10 a.m. this Saturday. Ladies thriving Thursday uh, is, let's see, tomorrow. tomorrow hey, I'm missing out the days, ain't I? Uh, tomorrow at 6 p.m. over in the gym. Don't forget all ladies. Uh, well, that's already happened too. Teens, our next outing is Saturday, May 28th at the church at 5 p.m. West Fund members, don't forget to see Brother Jeff after the service if you haven't already. Uh, don't forget this month is our uh, revival month. And uh, track blitz to help out with our um, revival. Uh, quick updates is uh, Tuesday, May 17th and Thursday, May 19th. That time will be at 6.30 p.m. And then uh, Saturday, uh, May 14th, and Saturday the 21st, those times will be at 10 a.m. So uh, don't forget about those dates to pass out all the tracks that we can to get people to come to church and uh, to help our county and our town and our church. Amen. Amen. And uh, BBI graduation, don't forget, will be uh, Sunday, May 15th, after the p.m. service. We have three graduating. Amen. Amen. And I uh, wish I was going with them. <laughs> no. I got two more years. <laughs> two more. Got one down. Amen. Uh, don't forget, dinner on the grounds will be uh, Sunday, May 29th. And uh, I believe on the graduation, Brother Michael Calhoun will be yes, preaching. Uh, we haven't mentioned that. So we're uh, looking forward to that. And then uh, Missionary of the Week is the Brigette family there in Japan. Please don't forget to pray for all of our missionaries around the world and uh, pray for our preacher and his family and our church family. Thank you and enjoy the service. Uh, real quick, on camp, uh, all, of our, all of our families, you have kids going to camp. Uh, for May 20th, is registration uh, is due by May 20th, and it's 35 per kid. Uh, so it's been 35 for your junior church and 35 for your junior church, for your junior camp and also for your teen camp as well. Uh, so have those in if you would, please. And then we're asking parents to pay the, pay the registration fee. 
and the money that the church uh, has made to help the kids, that helps pay the rest of the way to camp. I don't have that number right now for you, but I know we, we've done well thus far, um, but I can get that for you for Sunday. But that's due on May 20th, all right? So make sure you have that. And also, registrations also do as well. And Miss Leanne will have copies of that for you Sunday uh, for that as well, all right? Amen. Wonderful. Well, ushers, come on, it's time to please. And we'll take up the uh, evening offering. And while you're doing that, we, uh, we went ahead and paid uh, the metal company. And uh, we'll have sheet metal here probably between Monday and Wednesday of next week. And that will be delivered here on site. And then we're going to start probably... Uh, from tomorrow, we're looking somewhere in June to start actually hanging that metal up in the gymnasium next door. Uh, but most of the sheetrock is done, so I want to update you on that as far as what we're doing with all that. Amen. Let's uh, go to the Lord in prayer and ask Him to bless the offering, shall we? Father, we love you. Lord, thank you again, God, for the good rain you've sent our way. Lord, we've needed it. Lord, it's been, it's been rather dry lately, Lord, but I saw all that is in your timing and, and in your plan. And Father, we are thankful, Lord, for the sunshine, and we are thankful for the rain. Lord, I ask God that you would uh, bless tonight, Lord, the preaching, Lord, the singing. Uh, Lord, may everything that is said and done, may it bring honor and glory to your name. Father, would you, right now, Lord, would you bless the offerings. Lord, would they be used, Lord, to further your kingdom. God, may they be used to meet the needs of the church. Lord, may they be used to meet the needs of others. Uh, Lord, and again, God, just help us to be good stewards of what you've given us. We ask all this in your name. Amen. thought about the many times we've come short of pleasing God I mean just we've all have a specific thing that we can remember unfortunately but I, I sure am thankful for grace that God still loves me and God didn't throw me off the wagon 
didn't throw me off the potter's wheel. He just said, well, we're, we're going to fix it. He gives it mold and redo things. I just, just want to please God. I fail a lot. I mess up a lot. We all do. But isn't the Lord good? Amen. He's good all the time. Isn't he? Amen. Let's all stand, please, one more time, if you would. 329, 329, standing on the promises. Amen. at tonight we have one more song for before our bible reading time uh, so we have a song tonight for every cross there is a crown may it be a blessing to you and stir your heart
For we'd have no hope if he had not come down. He sees each and every heartache, every burden that we carry, and he whispers soon you'll trade them for a crown. Though the world is long and hard, and I may stumble, and the world claims victory. trade the world away for one more chance the greatest miracle taken for granted was the son of god has died for you and me and now the world tries to ignore him i will shout how i adore him though the devil rages the road is long and hard and I may stumble and the world claims victory when I am down but through it all I'm still clinging to the promise for every cross there is a crown though the road is long and time, take your Bible, Psalm chapter 10, and Brother Floyd's coming up at this time, and uh, he'll be coming up here to read our, our verse tonight, and we appreciate him doing that. Brother Floyd, come on, he's good, please, sir, and we appreciate Psalm chapter number 10. Got your glasses on? Yes. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> and fail. Yeah. And, and the letters I remember was G, D, and F. <laughs> and I said, I do it here. Amen. Wait a minute. I need Jeremiah. I, I, I thought while ago I was in Psalm. wicked in his pride do it to persecute the poor, let them be taken in the devices they have imagined. For the wicked boasteth of his heart's desire and pledgeth the covetous whom the Lord abhors. The wicked through the pride of his content 
commandments will not be kept as God. God is not in all his thoughts. His ways are always grievous. Our judgments are far above out of his sight. As far as his enemies, he purposes them. He has said in his heart, I shall not be moved, for I shall never be moved when he curses me. His mouth is full of cursing and deceit and fraud. And under his tongue is mischief and vanity. All that reminds me of Putin. I know he's probably talking about the devil. <laughs> <laughs> he sitteth in the lurking places of the city, and the secret places to which he murdered the innocent. His eyes are privy and set against the poor. He lieth in wait secretly as a lion in his den. He lieth in wait to catch the poor. He does catch the poor, and he draweth them in his net. He crouches and humbleth himself that the poor may fall by his strong one. He has said in his heart, God has to die, and he has hided his face. We will never see it. Arise, O Lord, O God, lift up thine hand, forget not the honor. Wherefore does the wicked condemn God? He has said in his heart, Thou wilt not require it. Thou hast seen it, for thou hast behold the mischief and the spite to require it in thy hand. The poor can himself into thee. Thou art the helper of the fathers. Break thou the arm of the wicked and the evil man. Seek out his wickedness till thou find him. The Lord is king forever and ever. Amen. He has perished out of this land. Out of his land. The Lord has heard the desire of the humble. Thou hast prepared their heart. That will cause thine ears to hear. To judge your fatherless and the oppressed, and the man of the earth no more oppressed. Amen. 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 Thank you for the four. That's it. Isn't it? Yes, sir. That's it. Okay. Amen. Thank y'all. Thank you. Good job. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. Here you go. Don't forget your notes. Oh, yeah. Watch your step. Yes, sir. Amen. Wasn't that good? Amen. Amen. I appreciate that. Amen. Did a good job with the Floyd. And uh, he, uh, so far, he's the one that, that, that approached me and said, can I read? And I said, sure. <laughs> so uh, so uh, I appreciate Brother Floyd. Brother Floyd, many of y'all don't know, but uh, Brother Floyd has some, um, some, some health issues that limit him in some things. Uh, but it doesn't limit his spirit. Amen. I remember when we, when we break this building in here, uh, many a day it was just he, he and I in here. Uh, and he would take, we'd pull out all wood and tear down things. He'd take a hammer, and he'd be on his knees in here with a hammer pulling out nails and straightening them and putting them in a the bucket. He'll work. He'll work. He loves his place. He loves his preacher. And I appreciate Floyd. I don't tell him enough, but I appreciate him very much. And uh, all of you men have, have been a tremendous help to me, and uh, I appreciate every one of you. Amen. Well, John chapter 15 John chapter 15 tonight, and uh, we're going to be here in a familiar, uh, well, the Lord's speaking here. He's, he's, he's answering some questions uh, by his disciples. He is addressing his disciples uh, at this time. And we come to, uh, he actually is addressing a question that was answered in John, in John 14. It was asked in John 14. He begins to answer that question and continues into John chapter 15. Now, in John 15... Uh, we find in verses 1 through 11, we find the word uh, uh, abide or abideth uh, nine times within those 11 verses. Uh, now, we're not we're talking, uh, talking a whole lot about abiding, but it is a very key component of tonight's message. But rather, I want to focus on verse 11, so we'll start there. So if you found your place tonight, would you say amen? Amen. The Bible says, These things have I spoken unto you that my joy might remain in you and that your joy might 
be full. Let's read that again. These things have I spoken unto you, that my joy, the Lord's joy, might remain in you, and that your joy might be full. I'm going to preach on this thought tonight, a, a, a joyful fulfillment. Let's pray. Father, we love you. Lord, thank you again, God, for allowing us to be here tonight. Lord, would you help me now to preach, Lord? Would you give me the, the grace? Would you give me the understanding? Father, would you use me yet again, God? Would you remove me of self? Would you remove me of sin, God? Would you remove me of, of, of sidetracks, Lord, and, 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 and just di different things, God, that may distract me today? God, would you help me? Father, would you be with your people tonight? Father, would you open their hearts and minds, Lord, that our joy can be full? And Father, I want to be a joyful person. I want to ask God now you'd help us, Lord. We ask all this in your name. Amen and amen. I was reading this in verse 11. It really kind of stuck out to me. The Lord says that these things have I spoken unto you that my joy might remain in you. He's not speaking of him giving us joy. He is speaking of him being happy with us. He is speaking of how that we as his child brings us joy. That we as a Christian bring the Lord joy. And I began to, to kind of ponder upon that and I began to look at that. And in verse 11, the latter part of it, he continues here and says that not only that my joy uh, might remain in you and that your joy might be full. That your joy might be full. There are many things that can bring us joy in this life. Some are earthly things, and, and those things are not necessarily wrong in itself. Uh, many of us have gotten a new something, a guitar or a gun or a vehicle or a bass boat or a new dress. I haven't got a new dress, but y'all might have got new dresses or shoes. Man, you got all happy about it. You got a little bit of joy about it, but aren't all of those things just kind of temporal things? They, they, they kind of lose their luster, don't they, after a while? And it become maybe even a burden at some point. I've got too many shoes, so I gotta get a bigger closet. I gotta do this, or I've got too many of this, so I gotta get this, or I've gotta sell this because it's broken now, or or whatever. The joy only lasts a little while for the earthly things. Matter of fact, in John 16, uh, I believe it's around verse uh, 21 or 22. Uh, look there, if you would, just for a minute. Uh, the Bible says, a woman, the Lord's still speaking here, a woman, when she is in travail, hath sorrow. Y'all would say amen to that, ladies, wouldn't you? Because her hour is come, the moment of labor, right? But as soon as she is delivered of the child, she remembereth no more the anguish for joy that a man is born into the world. So, I mean, that is a lovely thing. That is a wonderful thing. But at some times, you kind of want to pinch their heads off after a while, right? Amen. I love my kids. They bring me great joy. But there are times that when they behave and how they do, they don't bring me joy. Now, imagine tonight, if you would, as you as a, you and I as a Christian, we often don't bring our Lord joy. But He's written and given us some things that not only may His joy, may He be joyful in us, but that we, our joy might be full. I don't know of anyone that says, you know what, I don't want to have a full cup of joy. I don't want to be joyful. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm happy with mediocre. I'm happy with somewhere in the middle. Uh, I'm just getting by with my joy. No one wants to do that. You want to be a happy person, right? I, I believe everybody wants to be a happy and joyful Christian. Now, let's look at some words here just for a minute in verse 11 before we actually get into our, our message tonight. Look at the word full, if you would, please, in your Bible. That your, that your joy might be full. Now, this word full literally means to cram, level up, to furnish, or to satisfy. To cram, level up, to furnish, or to satisfy. How many of you would say, you know what, that's where my joy is at right now. I'm crammed, I'm leveled up, I'm satisfied. No, I don't think any of us would say that is exactly where I'm at tonight. I don't know, maybe you are, I hope so. 
But I know this, the Lord gave us some things in chapter, chapter 15 for us to look at in verses 1 through 11 that our joy might be full. Let's look at them, shall we? The Bible says in verse 1, I am the true vine, and my Father is the husbandman. Every branch in me. That is a very important phrase in this chapter. Very important phrase. Every branch in me. That means you're saved. He's talking to who here? He's talking to the disciples. He's talking to believers at this time according to our context. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it, that it may bring forth more fruit. Now, we know by John chapter 10 that when you're saved, you're saved forever. Amen? Amen. Go ahead and shake your head like this. All right. You're saved and saved forever. So, this here is not talking about he takes away you out of the vine, out of the branch. He's not taking you away from the Lord. You're saved, you're saved forever. But he very well may set you aside to where you're not being used of God like you once were. Much like Israel is still God's chosen nation, there's on a shelf tonight, amen? Once you're saved, you're God's child forever. Now, let's look here at verse 3, please. Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Abide, as your first word, abide, abide in me, and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide. In the vine, no more can ye, except ye abide in me. I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me, ye can do nothing. How many of you try to do something for God in your own power? You can't. It's, it's, it always fails. If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch. Now, notice this, please. We have in verse number 2, every branch in me saved. Look here. If a man abide not in me, no branch is mentioned there in reference to the vine. Look at verse 6 again. If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch. He's cast away. He was never in the vine, though. And it withereth, and men gather, gather them and cast them into a fire, and they are burned. If ye abide in me, and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what ye will, and it shall be done unto you. Herein is my Father glorified, that ye bear much fruit. So shall ye be my disciples." As the Father hath loved me, so have I loved you. Continue ye in my love. If ye keep my commandments, ye shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. These things, what things? The things we just read. These things have I spoken unto you, that my joy might remain in you, and that your joy might be full. I believe every Christian's joy can be full by performing the following commandments tonight. Now, between verses 1 and 11, we find three primary thoughts or three primary commandments. And I'm going to give those to you tonight. Amen. Now, again, the word abide is mentioned nine times here in our text. Now, the word abide simply means to stay and not to depart. It means to stay and not depart. Now, how many of us, don't raise your hand, but how many of us at some point in our Christian life have not been where God intended us to be in our relationship with the Lord? When talking about the word abide here in our text, it's talking about relational, not positional. Because you're saved, your position with God is a born-again believer. But relational is that when you are a child, as a child of God, are living your own life and doing what you want to do, and you're living in sin, and you're doing these things, can I just tell, can I tell you that you are departing from the faith at that point? Because you are not as close to it as you were. 
If I, if I come stand next to my wife and I put my arm around my wife, I am, I am close to her. I'm abiding next. I'm abiding with her. But as I begin to distance myself from her, I am departing away from where she is. But if I abide with her, I'm where she's at. Where she is, I am. Where she goes, I go. Where I go, she goes. Wherever he leads, I'll follow. Right? So, we're not talking about positionally. We're talking about relational. We're talking about relation here. The relationship between us and God. It can be fringed. It can be, it can be on the rocks a little bit. And it's never God's fault. It's our fault. And God loves us through all that. We ought to thank God for that. And thank God for grace and mercy. And forgiveness, amen, because God's always ready to forgive us. Let's look here again, please. Well, we, the very first thing we must do is we must abide. We must abide. If you and I are going to have our joy full, we must abide with the Lord. How does one abide with God? Why does one need to abide with God? And why should one want to abide with God? Well, how we abide with Him is we get close to Him. We get close to Him uh, by getting in His Word, getting on our knees and asking the Lord for help and guidance and, and talking to Him and just praising Him for who He is. We get close to God by being in His house. Uh, how many times in Scripture we find that when thou prayest, when thou fastest, fast is also, I think, a, probably a forgotten part of worship. Because it has become medically pushed. Now, I get it. Sometimes you've got to fast. I get all that. But I, in, in your heart of hearts, when was the last time you fasted for spiritual benefits and not for a health benefit or for some test somewhere you've got to go take the next day? I, I hate fasting blood work. I like to eat. Uh, and, and, and I don't want, I don't go to the VA, we're going to have fasting blood work. Well, guess what? I had coffee and a biscuit. <laughs> so it ain't happening, right? So it, it's not always a health benefit. The Bible tells us in Matthew that Christ said, when ye fast, don't let your face show it. Do it in secret that your Father can reward you openly. We have to get close to God. We abide with Him by doing what He's asked us to do. By spending time with Him, getting close to Him. What are the benefits here? Why, how is our joy full with us by simply abiding? Look here in verses 4 and 5. The Bible says, Abide in me and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself except it abide in the vine. No more can ye except ye abide in me. I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me ye can do nothing. If you want your joy to be full, you're going to have to abide in the Lord in his ability. Because our ability falls short of God's ability. If you think for one second I have any ounce of talent or ability to pastor and to preach... I do not. The Lord gives all of that to me. The same way God gives all of your ability and your talent and your things and your strength to you to serve Him. He gives it. Why? Because we, as a child of God, should abide in the what? Vine. In the vine. We are His child. We see here that when we abide in Him, we have ability that, he's, that He gives we find that when we abide with Him, that we also receive answers. Look at verse seven, please. The Bible says, "If ye abide in Me, and My words abide in My words abide in you, ye shall ask what ye will, and it shall be done unto you." Now, let me say this: I'm not one of those name it, claim it, peace and prosperity preachers, but I do believe this. I do believe that if you are uh, in, in God's will, there's no sin in your life, and you have a need. God will answer your need. It might be no, but God's going to answer your question, answer your prayer request. Why? Because God says He hears us. He hears us. We are talking about the seven hindrances to prayer. We preached on that, what, a month ago? Three weeks ago, something like that? The seven hindrances to prayer. There are things in our life that will hinder our prayer life, but as long as we are, uh, had, are, are uh, clean living and we're, we're, not, we're right with God and we're confessing our sins and things are good and we're taking care of what God's told us to take care of, and we're living in God's will, His perfect will for our life, and we need to Him, get a hold of Him, we need to answer, God's going to answer that problem. It may not be the way you want it, but He's going to answer. 
I think we forget too often, Brother Robbie, that, that sometimes God says no. Sometimes God says wait. Sometimes God says yes. But we all want the yes answer to our problem because it's what we want, but it's not what we need sometimes. And I'm thankful here the Bible says that if ye abide in me and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what ye will and it shall be done unto you. The Bible says that if we ask anything in his will, he'll answer it. Guess what? The more time we spend abiding with him, the more we realize what God wants for our life, the more is what God wants for our life, the more we ask for God to give us what we need. Lord, I know that you want me to be a pastor. God, give me the wisdom to do so. That's simple. That's lines up with God's will. He'll give me the wisdom that I need. He has thus far. Thank the, God, thank the Lord for that. I've made some bonehead things, but God, when I, God's wisdom is work, not mine. We see here that we must abide. James chapter 4, verse 8 says, the, verse, the first part of it says, Draw nigh to God, and He will draw nigh to you. We must spend time with the Lord. And get, How many of you guys like spending time with your wives? Amen. I hope you do. You better raise your hand. If she's living, you better raise your hand. Like spend time with you. Yeah, raise your, there you go. There you go, Jeff. <laughs> Jeff, I'll lead the pack, but it's right here. I got you. Why? Because she makes you happy. Or you wouldn't murder her. She makes you feel good on the inside. She loves you. You want to spend time with her. Hey, the Lord loves you. Makes you feel good on the inside. He cares about me. I want to spend time with him. I want to abide with him. I want, I want to stay and not depart. I want to stay and not depart. By the way, every time you choose to miss church or something else, you're departing. Every time you choose to do something wrong, you're departing. Every time you choose to, 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 not, to not pray, you're departing. Every time you choose to read your Bible, you're departing. You're not abiding. You're not abiding. Can I ask you a question? Are you departing this evening? I hope not. Because if you are, your joy will not be full. Your joy will not be full. Not only must we abide, but we must produce. We must produce. Look here, please, if you would, at verses uh, uh, number 4 and 5 again. And we'll look here in verse 8 as well. The Bible says, Abide in me and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself. Except it abide in the vine, no, no, no more can ye except ye abide in me. I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me ye can do nothing. I like verse 2. The Bible says, if Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it, that it may bring forth more fruit. Look at verse 8. Herein, herein what? Herein, that, that this, this, this purge, this, this fruit producing, here is my Father glorified that ye, what? Bear much fruit. So shall ye be my disciples. We must produce. We must produce what? Fruit. Huh. The, you, know, you know what the primary fruit of a Christian is? Of a Christian. There are other evidences, other fruits in your life. Fruit, fruits in your life. There are things that, that we can examine and we can look at and we can view. The Bible says, talking about uh, the wolves, that we shall know them by their fruits. Well, guess what? You'll know a Christian by their fruit also. How they carry themselves, how they conduct themselves, how they speak, the things they say, the things they watch, the things they do. All of that is evidence or fruit. But guess what? A banana tree doesn't produce apples. It produces bananas. Peach trees produce peaches. Christians produce Christians. And there is not a greater joy that you will find in a, mo in a single moment outside of salvation than leading somebody to Christ. That is, that, is, that is a wonderful, wonderful feeling. And the more that we do that, the more joy we have, the fuller our joy is. And that is something that, that, that lasts a lifetime. Why? Because there's reward for it in heaven. Yeah, Philippians chapter 4. 
There may fruit be added unto your account. Unto your account. Every time your, your, your missionary dollars go to our missionaries and they win somebody to Christ, guess what? That's fruit to your account. Every time you give someone a gospel track and they read it, guess what? That's fruit to your account. Every time you lead somebody to Christ, that's fruit to your account. Because one gives the seed, one waters the seed, and one reaps the harvest. You might even do all three and wonderful and shout the, shout the glory for it. But there may become a time when you just give a gospel track and they read it and not, not get saved. But guess what? You're still getting fruit. That's part of it. You're still getting it. You're still getting it. We've got to produce fruit, folks. We must produce. He says if we don't produce, guess what? He's going to set us aside. Look, look at it again. Look at verse 2. Every branch in me, positional, saved, born again, child of God, in me, that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. It's a lazy Christian. He sets them aside. They're still saved. But until they get right with God, until they get on fire for God, until they, get, until they start searching the Lord and drawing nigh unto Him, He's not going to use them like He could. Right. I mean, come on, folks. That's Bible. I'm, I'm reading the same, same. I got the same Bible you got. Amen. In me, say, I'll set aside. I'll take it away. He says, and every branch that beareth fruit, uh, he purgeth it, that it may bring forth more fruit. Hey, we don't like to be purged. You ever thought about how a rose bush feels? Or a fruit tree feels? And you go back and you start pruning that thing back? It hurts a little bit, don't it? Sometimes the Lord will bring some things in our lives that we don't understand. He's pruning the tree. Why? So that your joy might be full. That your joy might I want to be a joyful Christian, don't you? I want to be a joyful Christian. We must see, we must abide, we must produce. Produce what? Fruit, how much? Much of it. As much as you can. The primary fruit of a Christian is another Christian. Hey, what fruit are we producing? What fruit are you producing? What fruit is our church producing? Can I tell you that we can do better? Can I tell you that I can do better? Can I tell you that, that, that God needs to, to prune some things in our lives so we can do better? It may be taking away some busyness out of our lives. We're so busy. I'm busy. I'm busy. I'm too busy. Mama's going, yep, you sure are. My wife's going, yep, you sure are. But sometimes it, we, God just needs to, to wither some things in our lives so that he can prune it so that we can move on and have more fruit. Much fruit. Much fruit. Much fruit. Hey, you, you ever thought about this? That God may, God may prune something out of your life to free you up to help somebody prune something in their life so they can do more for God. You ever thought about that? There's this thing called cross-pollination. You've got to have different kind of trees. I've got, I've got three peach trees, three apple trees, three pear trees. I've got one lemon tree that's not supposed to have anything because it's a hybrid or something. I don't know. But I'm supposed to have these other three trees so that all three of them can do what they need to do. Right? God may take something out of your life to free up more time in your life to help another Christian so they can have to free up time in their life. It's called ministry. We must produce. What fruit are we producing that our joy can be full? We see we must abide, we must produce, and lastly, we must keep. Well, keep what? Keep His commandments. Look at verses 10 and 14. The Bible says, If ye keep my commandments, ye shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in His love. These things have I spoken unto you, that my joy might remain in you. Hey, it makes him happy to see us abiding. It makes him happy to see us producing. It makes him happy to see us obeying what he said to do. Hey, you know what I like my kids to do? Obey. <laughs> obey. It's just If you'll just obey, you'll get in a lot less trouble. I heard that my whole life coming up. And I was a pretty good kid, but there were times that I just didn't do it. And Daddy would say, Son, if you would just do what I tell you to do, you wouldn't get in trouble. Yes, sir. 
<laughs> you know, I'd hang my head. The Lord said, I've given you some commandments. Well, what are they, preacher? What are the commandments? Well, there's, a, there's, a, there's 613 Old Testament commandments, right? And you have to understand something. That before the written law, that's the law of Moses, we, 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 many, the average Christian thinks there's only 10 commandments. There's 613 in the Old Testament that applied to Israel in the written law. Okay? Now, prior to the written law, you had something called God's moral law. Right? Well, Hebrews teaches us that we are not under the law. Right? Because God nailed it to his cross and abolished it. Right? Okay. So... Does that mean we can do whatever we want to do? No. no. Guess why? Because God's moral law that reigned prior to the written law now reigns again. Amen. So guess what? Some of the written law applies today because it was first God's moral law. Amen. And God put it on paper or stone. Like thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not lie, thou shalt not covet. Right? All, the, all the, the major team we talk about, right? Those are God's, that's God's moral law that applies today. So, when we look at this, what are the commandments? Well, God makes it easy for us. Look here at verse 12. This is my commandment that ye love one another, as I have loved you. Greater love hath no man than this, that he may lay down his life for his friends. Ye are my friends, if ye do whatsoever I command you. Look at the last part of verse 14. If ye do whatsoever I command you. We must keep his commands. What are they? Where he tells us. To him that doth do good, not him as what? Sin. It's, uh, it is public service appreciation week. Uh, my wife and I were eating, eating lunch together this week. Uh, we had done some work, went to go get some things, and we stopped and got a taco. We put a taco and a burrito at our, our favorite Mexican joint here in town. And there was an officer in there that we always see, that we always uh, talk to him, and is, is, uh, I'm not going to tell you his name. But, um, but my, I, I went to get something or do something, and my wife went and paid, and she goes, oh, I, I paid for this, by the way. I went, okay, good. And then I thought about it. I think... Correct me if I'm wrong. But I think that's the first time you've ever done that. Okay. Let me tell you about my wife. She don't give money away. Lord said, Lord said, pay for that man's food. So she did. Because she knew if she didn't, there would be a consequence. Say, preacher, are you serious? Yeah. If the Lord tells you to do something and lays it on your heart and you ignore it, guess what you're doing? You are defying His commandment in your life. That's why God says here, whatsoever I command you. Whatever I tell you to do, do it. Chain of command. I speak, you do it. End of chain. That's, how, that's what God's saying. End of chain. That's it. That's how dad told me. He said, take a man, son. I say it, you do it, end of chain. Yes, sir. That was it. God says, whatever I tell you to do, you do it. Why? Why should I? So this your joy might be full. See, it's not about do this or don't do that. It's about God saying, I want to be happy with you. And if I'm happy with you, you'll be joyful. And if you'll do these things, you'll be, because why? You're spending time with me, you're seeing folks saved, you're doing what you're told. And can I just tell you something? Children in general want to please their parents. Amen. Some of y'all going, I'm my kids. <laughs> yes, children need structure. They need structure. They have to have something to do. If they don't, guess what? They go crazy. And you go crazy. Hey, meet our structure. I've got something for you to do. That you can be happy. Be joyful. Your joy might be full. I might be joyful. I can, I can, uh, my joy can remain in you and I can joy over you. Man. I think I've caused, I think I've probably caused the Lord to cry more than rejoice in my life. 
Think about that for a minute. All but that he might be joyful about me. All that he might be joyful with you. All that he might be joyful with William Heights Baptist Church. Amen. There's times you've all pleased him. And I believe we've done these three primary things. But don't you want to be joyful? Hey, abide. Spend time with God. Have his ability. Have his strength. Have the answers to your prayers, whatever they may be. Produce. Give someone the gospel. And lastly, keep the commandments. Whatever God tells you to do, just do it. If God pricks your heart, you move on it. If God says give, you give. If God says don't, you don't. If God says go, you go. If God says stop, you stop. If God says pray, you pray. If God says buy that man's lunch, buy his lunch. If God says pay their bill, pay their bill. And God's not going to ask you to do something that, you, that he's not giving you the ability to do. He's not going to do that. Or he'll provide a way for you to get it, to do it. But God's never asked me to do anything that I physically could not do. Like God didn't already have set up my life for, for, to do it. Because God's already provided it. Why? Because God's always previous. Amen. It's always before the problem. Amen? Amen? Hey, I want you to be happy. I want you to be joyful. I want to be joyful. And if we'll do these three things, these three commandments, I believe we will be. Are you keeping his commandments are you simply doing what the lord's asked you to do so that your joy may be full i want to be a joyful christian to you father we love you lord thank you again for loving us thank you for the word of god thank you for this simple truth tonight lord that we may be joyful may we may be full of joy god if we'll abide in you lord if we will produce lord and if we'll keep the commandments. Lord, not, not the written law, Lord. Well, I, don't, I don't want to kill anybody or anything, Lord. But at the same time, God, whatever you nudge my heart to do, whatever you say unto me, Lord, whatever you tell me to go or stop or, or get or whatever, whatever it may be, Father, help me to, to do those things. And God, so that my joy might be full within myself, Lord, but that you may rejoice and be joyful with me. Oh, God, that you'd be happy and satisfied with me. We love you and we thank you. Bless the invitation. We ask all this in your name. Amen. And amen. Our heads are bowed. Our eyes are closed. Tonight, say, Lord, you say, you know what, preacher? The Lord's not pleased with my life currently. My joy is not full like it once was. Well, I encourage you. Do these three commandments. Do these three things. Abide. Abide. Don't leave. Don't depart. Don't make decisions that draw you away from God. Produce. Tell folks about Christ. And keep His word. Keep His commandments. Whatever He tells you to do, just do it. So folks are praying. Where he leads me, I will follow.